So good morning, everyone. I am John Lister Tanduyan, the first supporter of the chapter one. So ballistics. What is ballistics? But in its broadest sense, ballistics is defined as the science of dealing with the motion of projectiles and the conditions governing that motion. So motion refers to movement or mobility. In ballistics, there are three types of motion, namely the direct motion, gyroscopic motion, and the translational motion. So direct motion is the forward movement of the bullet or shots out of the shell by the action of the expansive force of gases from burning a gunpowder. So direct motion is usually observed from a non-rifled bore or barrel, such as a revolver and a shotgun. Second is gyroscopic motion. It is the action of the bullet passing through a rifled bore, bore barrel, firearm which is either twisted to the left or left or right. So bullets fired from a rifled bore will either rotate to rotate counterclockwise or clockwise. Third is the translational motion. It is the action of the bullet once it hits a target and subsequently ricochet. Ricochet is a bouncing of bullet from its original trajectory. This usually happens when a bullet hits a hard object such as a metal, concrete, or a bone of the human body. Yaw is the unstable rotation of the projectile and tail wag is the end of the projectile. Wobbles before it picks up a smooth flight, flight path. So projectile means metallic and non-metallic objects propelled by means of force. In a strict sense, it is the study of natural laws relating to performance of gunpowder and projectiles in firearms and the means of predicting such performance. So the term ballistics, which was derived from the Greek word ballo or balen, which means to throw. Its root word also said to have been derived from, from the name of an early Roman war machine called ballista. Ballista is a gigantic bow or catapult which was used to hurl missiles or large objects such as a stone at a particular distance to deter enemy forces. So, in a, so in, simply speaking, ballista is considered as an ancient artillery weapon. So the early recorded firearms identification were done by the following people or persons. Hans Gross, Charles Whitty, Alexander Lacassan, Edmund Lockhart, Dr. Albert Llewellyn Hall, and lastly by Colonel Calvin Hooker Goddard, which was later on considered as the father of foreign ballistics, father of forensic ballistics. So forensic. Forensic is a term originated from the Latin word forum, meaning marketplace, where people gather for public disputation or public discussion. So forensic ballistic refers to the science of investigation and identification of firearms and ammunition used in crimes. The title Forensic Ballistics aptly describes the subject under consideration, the science of investigation and identification of firearms and ammunition used in crimes. The term ballistics, forensic ballistics, and firearm identi firearms identification have come to mean the same thing in the minds of the public, and they can be used interchangeably. It is also a refined tool mark identification where the firearm is made of material harder than ammunition components, acts as a tool to leave impressed or striated marks on the various ammunition components that come into contact with the harder surface of the firearm.
So branches of ballistics. First is the interior or internal ballistics. It refers to the proper properties or and attributes of the projectile once while still inside the gun. It covers from the time the firearm is loaded with the car with in the cartridge, the explosion of and the movement of the bullet from the breech to the muzzle of the gun. So attributes of interior or internal ballistics. It starts from firing pin hitting the primer, ignition of the priming mixture, combustion of gunpowder, expansion of heated gas, pressure developed, energy generated, recoil of the gun, velocity of the bullet, in the gun, rotation of the bullet and the barrel, engraving of the cylindrical surface of the bullet, and lastly is the muzzle flash. Second is the exterior or external ballistics or transition ballistics. It refers to the attributes and movements of the bullet after it has left the gun muzzle which includes the condition of the bullet's movement and flight up to the target. So attributes of exterior ballistics. First is muzzle blast. It is the noise created at the muzzle point due to sudden escape of the expanding gas coming in contact with the surrounding atmosphere. Due to the sound at the muzzle end of the gun, a silencer was invented to minimize the sound, which later on, criminal took advantage of to conceal the crime. Second is muzzle energy. It is the energy generated at the muzzle point whenever the cartridge explodes from a firearm. Next is trajectory. Trajectory is the actual curve path of the bullet during its flight from the gun muzzle to the target. There are stages of trajectory, namely the straight line, straight horizontal line, a parabola-like flight. A parabola-like flight is when a bullet is pulled by the gravity, thus initially, the bullet initially has a straight line and eventually it will form an arc. And lastly is the vertical drop. Which the bullet from the atmosphere is drop straight to, straight to the surface of the earth. Second, uh, next is range. Range is the straight distance from the muzzle to the target. It is classified into accurate range, effective range, and maximum range. So effective range is the distance within the shooter that has control of his shot. Zero range, this is the farthest distance at which the line of sight and the bullet's path intersect. Effective range, is the distance within which the bullet was fired, it is still capable of inflicting fatal injury. Third is maximum range, is the farthest distance that a projectile can, pro can be propelled from a firearm. Range is based upon the intrinsic accuracy of the firearm and ammunition, size of the target, marksmanship, ability of the shooter, the ability to discern the target, knowledge of the ballistics characteristics of, um, of the ammunition and the level of power needed to be delivered to the target. So next is velocity. It is the rate of speed per unit time. In 1707, Cassini, an astronomer suggested measuring a firearm, firearms muzzle velocity. Next is air resistance or aerodynamic drag. Resistance encountered with a bullet during its flight, which reduces its speed. There are three, three parts of the bullet, bullet, namely three parts of the drug of bullet, namely the bore resistance, in friction, and base drag. So due to the pressure at the head of the projectile, that's when the bow resistance came from. Skin friction is caused by the Friction of air moving along the middle portion of the body of the bullet. Third and last is the base drag. Due to the under pressure and disturbance of the air behind the base of the bullet.
Next is pull of gravity. So pull of gravity is the downward reaction of the bullet towards the center of the earth due to its weight. The pull of gravity will apply only starting from the parabola, then to the maximum range and to the final vertical drop. However, in a defective range, the bullet could withstand the pull of gravity due to its velocity and gyroscopic stability. And maybe lastly, penetration is the depth of entry on the target based on the power and velocity of the bullet. So third branch of ballistics is the terminal ballistics. It refers to the effects of the impact of the projectile on the target. The knocking power of a particular powder load of the cartridges, which makes a devastating lesion caused by the bullet. Attributes of terminal ballistics. The terminal accuracy, it is the size of the bullet grouping on the target. Terminal energy or striking energy is the energy of the projectile when it strikes the target. This refers to the fatal equivalent of the bullet when it struck the victim. It has two subcategories, shocking power and stopping power. Shocking power is the power of the bullet that resulted in the instantaneous death of the victim. Second is the stopping power, the power of the bullet that put the victim out of action instantly. Next is terminal velocity. Terminal velocity is, is the speed of the bullet upon striking the target. And lastly, the terminal penetration is the depth of entry of the bullet in the target. So this will be the therapy covered by my partner. So I will give the, the give him the turn to speak now. So good morning, everyone. I am the second reporter. My name is Jefferson Diarmonio. So this time we are going to talk about the forensic ballistics. So forensic ballistic is it refers to the investigation and identification of firearms by means of ammunition fired through them. This is the real branch of the science which the police use as their guide in the field investigation. So forensic ballistic focusing on the projectile that projectile of the ammunition. So it is used to identify the firearms. So attributes of forensic ballistics. So we have first the field investigation. Field investigation are conducted by first responders when they investigate a case wherein firearm had been used. Then second one is the technical examination. Technical examinations of ballistic exhibits are conducted by firearms examiners in the ballistics laboratory to determine the value of firearms exhibits in the solution of the case. Then, next one is the legal proceeding. Legal proceeding, it includes making a ballistic report and presentation of the result of the examination conducted before the court. So, shot ballistic. It is a study of shotgun ammunition, including its characteristics, spread, and trailing. So, shot ballistic is focusing only specific in the shotgun ammunition. So, we have first the choke. So choke is the diameter of the barrel of shotgun is the same throughout the bore. The bore of the gun is sometimes constricted near the muzzle end. That is the diameter near the muzzle end is slightly smaller than the, the, the diameter of the bore of the rest of the barrel. So choke is the constricted part of the muscle of the shotgun ammunition. So choke have different characteristics. So we have first the full choke. So bore constriction is reduced by one millimeter. If a barrel will put 70% of its shot charge in a three, uh, 30 inch, 76 centimeter. Circle at 40 yards, 37 meters. A full choke 
trail trail gauge gun vehicle ducks that are about 60 to 65 yards and to 55 to 59 meters away so aside sa full choke we have the half choke half choke bore bore constriction is reduced by one half millimeter <clears throat> Then we have also a quarter choke. Bore constriction is reduced by 14 millimeter. Improved choke, bore constriction is reduced by about by about 110 millimeter or about 50% of the shots. Then modified choke, it will deliver about 60%. So next one is we have the chilled shot. So what is chilled shot? Chilled shot is the shotgun pellets made from lead, especially hardened by addition of the slight amount of antimony. So antimony, it is a chemical element that is slightly silver in color. So after sa shot ballistic, we have also a wound ballistic. So what is wound ballistic? It refers to the study of the effects of a projectile on a target and the condition that affect them. So gunshot wound, it is an open wound produced by a penetration of bullet slug within the tissues of the body. The bullet which was propelled from the gun as well as the flame from the heated expanded gases in short range fire is one that produces injury. So that is gunshot wound. So two kinds of gunshot wounds. We have the perforating wound and the trans. A perforating wound or the transfixing wound. So an injury in which an object enters the body or a structure and passes all the way through. The wound has an entrance and exit. So that is perforating, perforating wound. So the other one is the penetrating wound. The injury implies that the object does not pass through. So if a perforating wound is not passed as an object, a penetrating wound is does not pass. So it only has an entrance wound. Therefore, the bullet can be found inside the body and source of a firearm identification. So that are, that's their differences. So three basic kind of gunshot, gunshot wound distinguished by the proximity of the weapon. So we have the contact, loose discharge, and the distance discharge. So contact is a gun muscle pressed against or within an inch or two within an inch or two of the body then we have also the close discharge so the distance is, is six inches to two feet and the uh, last one is the distance discharge is over two feet or three feet so next so other gunshot gunshot wound characteristics so we have first the pink colorization so this is this will specify on the target so the effect on the target so we have the pink colorization caused by absorbed carbon monoxide in the skin and flesh then we have also the dirt ring deposited by some projectile which carry greases on them around the wound existence of this indicates the entrance side of the firearm injury and does not indicate the range So we have also the contusion. Contusion is caused by the impact of the projectile. Reddish dark to bluish black ang ihang color. Vary somewhat with vary somewhat with the age of the injury. It takes the form of a of a belt around the wound. It is of uniform in thickness. So we have also the fire materials. The, their presence not only permits the identification of the firearm's injury, but they also permit a fairly reliable guess of the firearm. So factors influencing entrance and exit gunshot wounds. <laughs> so kind of weapon. So the higher power the weapon is more destructive to the tissues of the body. So it is very understandable. So caliber, <laughs> caliber of the weapon. Okay. The higher the caliber of the wounding bullet, the greater will be the size of the wound of entrance, hence greater destructions to the tissues. So shape and composition of the missile. 
The conical shape free end of the bullet slug have more penetrating power but less tissue destruction. While bullet slug with hemispherical free end had less penetrating but more destruction to the tissues. Range of fire. The injury is not only due to the missile but also due to the pressure of the heated expanded gas, flames, and articles of gunpowder. However, in long-range fire, the characteristic effect of the bullet alone will produce the injury. It may include, so first we have the muscle pattern. Muscle pattern is the whole ch charge, projectile, shot, or slug enter into the target. If the edge are found rug torn in the star shape and the wound is like an exit wound. Scorching caused by the flame or hot gases, not by the hot projectiles as is commonly believed it is also known as the burning or the charring. So the third one is the blackening. It is caused by the deposition of smoke particles by all types of powders at close ranges. Being light particles, they soon lose their velocity and get deposited on any material available in the path. In the part one, we have the tattooing or also called the papering, caused by the embedding of the unburnt and unburnt and semi-burnt powder particles into the surface of the target. So, direction of fire, array, a right angle approach of the bullet to the body will produce a round shape wound of the entrance in short distance fire. While in the acute angle of the approach, the bullet will produce an oval shaped wound of entrance with contusion color widest on the side of the ac acute angle of the approach and a tendency for the bullet to deflect to another direction upon hitting the target. So part of the body involved. So when the bullet hits the soft tissues of the body, the bullet penetrates and usually without any change in direction. However, upon hitting the bones and other hard body structures, the bullet may fracture the bones, causing further injury or may deflect to another direction. So I guess that would be all for our topic. Thank you. Thank you.